whether it is collective bargaining or defence of health, education, childcare, viable pensions, or issues of global solidarity is legendary around the world. And we, as we see corporate power collude to destroy collective bargaining, to erode wages and drive greater inequality, as we see big business and big finance cower governments as they demand higher and higher profits for the 1%, then the CLC's generous support of the Committee on Workers' Capital is very much appreciated. With your leadership of the CWC, Ken, we are bringing this work centre stage as we take on big business and big finance nationally and internationally. From disinvestments in Walmart, the champions of anti-union behaviour, to the research into the investors in the Brazil World Cup, to the education of our trustees of our pension funds as to job-centred, long-term ethical investments. This is vital work and I thank you. This corporate power must be tamed. We are seven years into an economic crisis, as Ken said, that was born in America, but quickly affected the global workforce as it became a bitter crisis of unemployment. I recently heard America's Jeffrey Sachs say, American democracy was the best that money could buy. The victims of this corporate intrusion are our people. I have sat with many of the workers in crisis countries and captured their stories. They break your heart, they make you angry, but most of all, they make you determined to fight right alongside of them. These workers and many more around the world are in the front lines, the front lines of a war on workers from the very forces that bought them the financial, bought the financial system to its knees in 2008. But now, having stolen taxpayers' money to recapitalise, they're looking for the blood of workers. And having a taste of power, organised employers have now taken this fight inside the ILO. They are challenging governments to abandon ILO jurisprudence, beginning with the right to strike. Therefore, our fight is also now in the very heart of workers' territory, the UN system and the ILO in particular. These workers and many more around the world are in the front lines, the front lines of a war on workers from the very forces that bought them the financial, bought the financial system to its knees in 2008. But now, having stolen taxpayers' money to recapitalise, they're looking for the blood of workers. And having a taste of power, organised employers have now taken this fight inside the ILO. They are challenging governments to abandon ILO jurisprudence, beginning with the right to strike. Therefore, our fight is also now in the very heart of workers' territory, the UN system and the ILO in particular. Right-wing employers, as well as uh, employers, uh, uh, right-wing employers are actually exploiting government's weakness globally. And now they're taking the fight to the streets in places like Cambodia, where they defended the military intervention against workers for, who were striking for minimum wages of $160 a month. $160 a month is what it will take to eke out a living with dignity in Cambodia. And the, and the employers, the local brands, think it's okay to shoot and jail trade unionists. Well, brothers and sisters, not on our watch. Not on our watch. We will rise... <laughs> we will rise from our Congress in just two weeks, I have no doubt, with, uh, with a commitment, a determination to fight for a minimum wage on which people can live everywhere. With a determination to fight for universal social protection. And we're going to begin in Asia and move it on around the world, and I know you'll be with us. Brothers and sisters, we are the voice. Tragically, we are the voice of opposition. And of course, we are the voice of progress. That's why we must build workers' power. I know you are fighting back and winning against all kinds of attacks here in Canada. I've been watching 
the threats of the right to work proposals unbelievable in your great nation. But your capacity to engage your members and your communities is your strength. And again, I say to you, take heart. You have the support of your people. 72% of Canadians think workplaces with unions are better places. And your campaign for fairness, Ken, is making real inroads. We can see it in the data. Our data shows that the number of people who strongly support the right to join the union rose from 32% in 2012 to 39% in 2014. And you have 44% on top of that who support it to uh, uh, somewhat support it. That's a huge 71% of people who are warm about Canadian unions. 